Baruch Haba. Welcome, Erifo, good evening, and Shalom. And we'll start our grammar class, and again we're discussing relative pronouns. And so uh, we're going to start, first of all, with vocabulary. And our vocabulary tonight has a relative pronoun in it. If you were here last Wednesday, I hope you recognize the relative pronoun in there. Okay? Your sentence ends here. And I put the dash here because it's not actually the end of the sentence. It's just where we're stopping. Okay? These then are three extra vocabulary for you. Okay? This is a verse. And once we get going into it, it should be familiar to you. Okay? Another interesting thing, we discussed uh, two words last week that are very similar, and in the Hebrew they come out similar, uh, but they're different. And these two words um, are here tonight as well, so I thought I would show it to you, and everything is all in one. And then next week we're going to finish, we're going to finish, we're going to do the rest of the verse, because it's going to, this, this particular verse shows you some interesting things about Hebrew and the way Hebrew grammar, Hebrew sentence structure works. <coughs> okay, so let's go with the words first. Who's got the first one? One, two, three, four. Laura, what do you have? Close. Ashrei. Everyone say Ashrei. Say it again. Ashrei. This was a word that I gave to you last week, not as part of your vocabulary, but as an extra. If you wrote it down, you should know what Ashrei means. It should be in your notes from last week. Okay? Again, everyone say Ashrei. Give it to me. Okay, so you have Ashre. Do you remember what Ashre means? Happy, very good, huh? Happy, yes, that's why. <laughs> this is the word that I did not give you last week. But it's similar to the word that I gave you last week, which we were discussing, which is the relative pronoun. Okay, so ashray, everyone say ashray. Ashray. Happy. Happy. Again, ashray. Ashray. Happy. Happy. This is the word that is used, remember when we talked about this, this is the word that is used for the word blessed. In the, particularly in the King James and those, those uh, that, that family of translations. The word blessed. Uh, this is the word that Yeshua uses uh, in Matthew chapter 5 on the, on, on the mount when he is giving what are called the Beatitudes. <laughs> blessed are, are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who ashe, 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 ashe. Happy. Happy, happy, happy. Okay? And so your first word is ashe, happy. Who's got the next one? Joshua. Ha'ish. Ha'ish. Everyone say ha'ish. Ha'ish. Again. Ha'ish. Again. Ha'ish. Again. Ha'ish. Again. Ha'ish. Again. Ha'ish. Give it to me. Ha-ish. Okay, so this is, now here you have, this is a good example of having a noun with the definite article in front of it. Okay, this is a noun with the definite article, ha. Everyone say ha. Ha. It's not laughing, ha ha ha. All right. <laughs> this is the definite article in Hebrew, this is the definite article, the. the. So you know already what here? The the, the, the man. Haish. Say Haish. Haish. The man. The man. Say it again. Haish. Haish. The man. The man. Haish. Haish. The man. The man. So you have Ashrei 
Ha'ish. Say it. Ashrei Ha'ish. Again. Ashrei Ha'ish. Ashrei Ha'ish. So you have happy, the man. What's missing? Is. Who's got the next one? This is the one you had last week. Charity. Asher. Asher. Everyone say Asher. Asher. Again, Asher. Asher. Again, Asher. Asher. So give it to me. No sound. Aleph. And then A. The E. The E. The E. And the H. Asher. Now, this. And Hashem means? Who or which. Who, which or that. Who, which or that. <coughs> it can be any, any one of these three. Notice these are the two words that I gave you to show you the difference. Okay? Because you have a man who is called Asher. Asher. You have a tribe called Asher. But Asher, in that sense, does not mean who or which or that. Asher, in that sense, is coming from Asher, which means happy. happy. So the tribe of Asher was a happy. tribe. Okay. How many of y'all are part of the happy tribe? No? Well, they just did. Yes. Yes. It's five o'clock somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Next word. Two letters. Actually, three. We'll get into it. Cody. Low. Lo. Everyone say low. Lo. Again, low. Lo. Like low, behold, right? Low. Lo. Say it again. Low. Lo. Again. Lo. Lo. Give it to me. Okay, cholim. Here you see a cholim, which is O. Aleph is silent, so you have lo. And lo means no. This is the Hebrew word for no, lo. We can actually say that it is the Hebrew word for a negative response because it, it can mean more than just no. Okay? What is the Hebrew word for yes? Close K. 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 Like Barbie dog? K. Okay. Everyone say K. K. Lo. K. Lo. K. Again, lo, lo ke. Ke. So lo means no. no. Lo and ken means yes. yes. So let's do it. Ready? Ashe ha'ish ashe lo. Again, ashe ha'ish ashe lo. Again, ashe ha'ish ashe lo. Okay, you can do it here. Ashrei ha'ish ashrei lo. But I want you, I'm leaving that there for your security, but I want you to start looking at this. Okay? This, yes, this is here, but it's kind of like uh, the serpent with the apple in the garden. Okay? It's there, but I want you to focus here. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Ashrei ha'ish ashrei lo. Again, Asher Ha'ish Asher Lo. Say Asher Ha'ish Asher Lo. Happy is the man who no. Or, or which no. Or that no. But we'll get into this with the pronoun when we get to, and we study the pronoun. When you're speaking of a person, generally, what pronoun are you going to use? Who? Who? Usually, which or that refers to not humans. Okay? Now, it can be used for humans when you have a group or something like that. Which ones? 
that kind of thing. But generally, um, you have these to deal with for humans, who and whom in English. Um, who would be like second person singular? Who who are you? Uh, who generally uh, has has to do with pronouns? So that's when you uh, how do you know to use who or whom? To whom does this belong? Okay. So, but anyway, we're not going to get into all the technicality of that. So let's do this again. What? I see. The man. The man. Who? No. no. All right, next one. Who's got it? Nobody else? Patrick? Halak. Halak. Everyone, halak. 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 This is from where we get our word halaka. Okay? Halaka is what? Halaka is the noun. This is the verb. So halaka, the walk. Okay? Walk. The walk. So, so halak, give it to me. Kasuke. Notice it's got that. So, what? So it's going to be a K. Halak. Everyone say it. Halak. Say it. Halak. No, not a hard at the beginning. It's a halak. Halak. When you get to go through with the Hebrew, real fast, sometimes it gets, uh, sometimes you get a little confused. Like what? Well, yes, yeah, like well, like when we're doing our blessings, and you're, uh, you will hear a lot of times um, um, in the Orthodox community that they call that they call God Elohim, 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 Elohim. But uh, it's because they're going too fast. Not too fast. It's well, just the way you get used to. They won't even say it that way. They'll be like, "Hey, you're substitute it for the most part." Do what? They substitute it for for a king. Yeah, no, well, not actually, not. It's it's not real common that there are some who do, but it's not real common. Elohim is, is because Elohim can be, it can be actually a lot of things. We use it as the form of of what? God. Okay, but it actually means more than God. Uh, being by that I mean, it means it means other things besides just God. We use it to refer to as God, but it also means judge. Um, it also means. Uh, for example, uh, human beings, uh, God says, are you not Elohim? Are you not judges? Uh, so it can be used in more than, there's more than one definition for the word. We use it as that, because technically there's nothing greater. In the Hebrew concept, there's nothing greater than an Elohim. So uh, that's why it's used for that. So, halak. <coughs> Technically, what? To walk. To walk. So, Hebrew, ready? Ashe, Haish, Ashe, Ashe. Okay, ready? Ashe, Haish, Ashe, Lo, Hala. Again. Ashe, Haish, Ashe, Lo, Hala. Again. Ashe, Haish, Ashe. Again. Ready? Ashe, Haish, Ashe, Lo, Hala. Again. Ashe, Haish, Ashe, Lo, Hala. Again. Ashe, Haish, Ashe, Lo, Hala. So what? Happy is the man who knows to walk. Notice, okay, notice that it sounds rough, it sounds ragged to the English ear. 
Okay? Why? Well, because there's a word missing that we usually use that we will stick in here. Not that we will that we would stick in here for speaking English. It's not there. Okay? So very simply, happy the man who no walk. Uh, she's just telling Nora, okay, this ain't making sense to me, she's, <laughs> she finally cleared it. But this is Hebrew grammar that yes. you need to get used to. Yes. So, they don't, they don't stick in all of the flowing stuff that we put in in English that, for that, that will be flowing to us. To them it's flowing. Mm -hmm. But to us it sounds rough. Uh, we put the finesse in there. Keep in mind, as well as we're going through grammar, that subject and verb do not have to follow the rules of English. Where normally, generally, the subject comes where at the sentence? The beginning. And the verb comes where? The predicate comes where? After the subject. So usually it's subject predicate, subject verb. In Hebrew, Sometimes it's subject verb, subject predicate, sometimes it's predicate first and the subject comes after. Sometimes it's the subject, the noun, and then sometimes it's the verb, sometimes it's the verb, and then the noun. They can switch around. So as we get into the grammar, <coughs> the, these are some of the entanglements that you have to kind of figure out. And as I have stated before, now you understand the difficulty don't get up so upset at the translators, okay? You, you see that a lot, uh, you know, in, in discussions on Facebook or whatever, that the translators did this and that the translators did that. Um, some of it, some of it, yes, some of it I would say was done on purpose with a motive. Yes. Some of it's just, how do you do this? How do you translate? There are some words I, uh, I was studying uh, a couple of days ago uh, on a word for which in English there's no good translation for. They, they, you can kind of dance around it and get the idea across, but there is no exact word in English for that word. And so you have to understand, this is the difficulty of translating from one language and culture to another. How do they get that idea across to us? <coughs> and then, you know, the, the King James Version was translated, you know, how many hundreds of years ago? And our own language has changed. Our own language has changed just in the last 10 years. So, how do you do this? And how do you get, it's not just a matter of getting words across, but how do you get the meaning of it, the significance of the verse across? That's why you have some types of translations which are more literal than others. Others, others are word for word literal, and others know it's the idea of the verse. <clears throat> so you'll, you'll find uh, the, the English Standard Version is more, uh, is, is actually the most accurate word for word translation. Whereas the NIV uh, and others like that are more on uh, uh, for uh, Messianics, the uh, Tree of Life version or the uh, Complete Jewish Bible is more getting the idea across than getting the word for word translation across. There's a book, um, I just started reading it called The Grammar of God, and it's uh, by Avia Kushner, and she talks about that. There is basically the first time um, she heard the Bible in English. She grew up with it in Hebrew. And how uh, sometimes uh, the things that are lost in translation. Yes. And then in other instances where uh, the story, they get the story very beautiful. Yes. Yes. But just, just yeah, it's all up to the translator and which word they choose to. The, 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 the parables of Yeshua in the Rekadashah, the New Testament, actually become real when you, when you understand the Hebrew behind it and the culture behind what's being said and everything, it actually becomes fantastical. It becomes tremendous. 
and you know sometimes there are times in the English where you read a verse and you say, "What does that mean? You know, where did that come from?" Yeah. Where if you understood the culture and you understood the Hebrew behind it, um, it makes sense to you. Um, I was listening to uh, a rabbi teaching uh, this morning on on Achal, on Aaron as the Kohen Hagadol, as the high priest, and that how the English says that he uh, that he sacrificed first for himself, where literally in the Hebrew this, the first sacrifice was upon himself, that he took the sin. It wasn't that he sacrificed. For himself, but that he took the sin upon himself. Now, does that sound familiar to you? He's the Kohen Hagadol. He's the high priest who took the sin upon himself. Come on, Christianity here. Who took the sin upon himself? Yeshua. So that he who knew no sin, but became sin for us. And he was sacrificed for the sin. He became as though he were a sinner. Not just a sinner, but how guilty? What was the penalty? So we're not talking some minor infraction here. And what it was, what the discussion was this morning that I was listening to, and it was comparing the two, but what the discussion was between the two was how Aharon, how Aaron, as the Kohen Hagadol, the high priest, took the sin, or the sin of the nation upon himself. This is what the Hebrew says that you do not get it in the English, that he was actually bearing the sin of the nation. So that he was in a righteous state, but he was becoming the sin of the nation. And so in this, in this estate, he was, as Kohen Hagadot, as the high priest, he was representing Mashiach, he was representing the Messiah. Who, what? What does the book of Hebrews say? Yirim, the book of Hebrews say what? That we have a high priest who suffered on our behalf. Okay? So, what we're saying is the reason why we stop here is to, to understand that, that everything doesn't come across in English translation, which is why we're doing what we're doing. It's not just so that you can say the, the, the rachot and these kinds of things. It's so that you can read and understand for yourself. Why? Because there are secret things. Secret? Part of why are we saying secret? There are mysteries there which God wants to reveal to us, but in order for you to reveal these things to us, what? You can't read it in the, in the English. You have to go to the Hebrew. Okay? So... Um, okay, next one. Who's got it? Charity? I'll give me a hard one. Send your time. Ba'ath. Ba'ath. Yeah, one more syllable. Yes. Yes. Right here? Let's go slow, right? Ba, a, sa. Everyone? Ba, a, sa. Ba, a, sa. Again? Ba, a, sa. Now, you might see this like this. Remember that the, you might see it like that. Don't try to confuse you. But it had a name. Yes, I, I changed, changed. just changed it. Okay. I'm saying, you might say it like this, and you might say it like that. Yeah, I did a magic trick, and then I'll switch from both. The magic trick was uh, to use my hand like this. Okay. 
Everyone, ba'atsat. Ba'atsat. Again, ba'atsat. Ba'atsat. Say it. Ba'atsat. Say it. Ba'atsat. Ready? Let's go slow. Ba-a-sat. There's a T at the end, top. Ba-a-sat. Now, you have this here. This mark always means what? To cut short. So this A is going to be shorter. ba a This one's going to be a longer one. ba a Again. ba a Again. ba a Give it to me. Letter? B. A. And then it's no sound. Letter? Uh, Ayin. Ayin. And then the A cut short. And then the... Sodi. No. Sodi. Sodi. Oh, A. That's what I was going to say. And then the top. Very good. You can see it like this. Ba. Atsat, or you could see it like this. This is usually the way you want to see it. But atsat. Okay. This, this one here, this top one here, is this valve. This one here is this valve. So, again, you have a prefix. In. 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 Very good. In. Where do you see it? What is it? Bait. Bait. The bait. The bait. Okay, so the bait. House. By it, house. So you go in the house. So in the, the, the bait. Baked as a prefix. Baked as a prefix. Usually it's going to look like this before the nail. Can y'all see? Yes. Hey! Silence. Thank you. And it will mean in, into. It is also many times translated as with. But this is actually what it is, in or into. Scripture says, we have an advocate 
En español tenemos un abogado con el padre. We have an advocate with the father. All right, so take it back to the Spanish. Sometimes it does good to go to another language. We have tenemos un abogado. Literally what? We have a lawyer. We have an advocate with the father who is Yeshua Mashiach. Everyone say it. Some of y'all are looking at me like deer in the headlights. Okay? We have an advocate, say it. We have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua, the Messiah. Who is your advocate? Yeshua. So the Tanakh agrees with the Rit Hadashah that Mashiach will be called your advocate, will be called your counselor, will be called your lawyer, will be called Abogado. Okay? So this is the idea behind this word, <coughs> counsel, advice. So, atzat, the atzat part from etzad, meaning to counsel or to advise. So this is the noun form. Okay? In advice. Do it with me, ready? Ashe ha'ish, ashe lo ha'ak ba'atzat. Again. Ashe ha'ish, ashe lo ha'ak ba'atzat. Again. Ashe ha'ish, ashe lo ha'ak ba'atzat. Okay. So, hai, ashe, ha'ish, ashe, lo, kalak, batzat. What? Happy is the man who knows to walk in advice. Notice that there is no definite article. Not in the advice. In advice. As in any advice. If there's no definite article, then what? It is automatically indefinite. Okay? So, it's not talking about specific advice, it's talking about what? Um, All advice, any advice. Do not walk in any advice. Last word, who's got it? Patrick? Rashaim. Uh, Rashaim. Rashaim. Everyone? Rashaim. Right here. Re Shaim. Re Shaim. Re Shaim. Say it. Re Shaim. Again. Re Shaim. Again. Re Shaim. Again. Re Shaim. Again. Re Shaim. Okay. So give it to me. So you have Re Shayim. Okay, now can you see it? Re Shayim. And Re Shayim comes from the word Rasha, which is what? Evil. Evil. Very good. Wicked. What is the difference between between this? Does anybody you, you surely you recognize this verse by now? Yes. Psalm one one one. Okay, this is Psalm one one. Tefillim aleph aleph. Everyone, tefillim aleph aleph. Tefillim aleph aleph. All right, Psalm one one. Okay. So. You're going to have a series, and this is why we're going to continue with this verse, if I can remember. We're going to continue with this verse next week. This, because you have what? 
It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. What's the difference between the wicked and the sinner? <coughs> why, why does it use wicked here and sinner there? Sometimes does, and then by the time oh, the light comes on, you realize that you did. The wicked don't. Have so sometimes people don't realize they're sinning. Yeah, but and the wicked sin on purpose, right? That's what I meant to say. Iniquity. Yeah, it's done intentional. And the sinner sometimes just well, never gives like everybody. Everybody is even the right. Yeah, and then all the people say, "Ah, hello." Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, so what it is, is that it's rasha, is, is wicked, chata is sinner. Everyone say, chata. Rasha is a very concrete form, which is where some of you are going with this. That this person is intentionally guilty. Delivered. Um, that uh, they are morally wrong. In other words, this is a person who's morally bankrupt. To their core. Yes. A bad person. This is a bad person. I never understood this. So maybe somebody here can explain it to you. Why do... Why do certain young women chase after bad boys and then get upset when the bad boy turns out to be a bad, bad boy. boy. Yeah. I.e. Sandra Bullock, right? She was she married that motorcycle dude. He is a known rebel, correct? No boundaries, no lines, and yet she is horrified to find out that He's having affairs on her. Now I know I'm going back a few years, but that's because she was my crush. Just <laughs> I rang her doorbell for real. She has a yeah, she has a, a home in Jackson, Wyoming, and my brother was a house sitter for the millionaire family that lived across the street. And so he took me over to his house one day and he said, uh, you know, that's Sandra Bullock's house across the street. I said, really? This was right after Speed had come out. And so I walked across the street. And, I mean, there were no gates, no nothing. I just walked across the street. There were some cars parked there. And I just walked up and rang the door. Did you know afterwards? No. <laughs> I stood there and waited with the flowers in my head. She never came out. No. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, nobody answered the door, so I guess they looked out and said, well, there's that dude, uh, you know, <laughs> nobody, nobody answered the door. But this finger did ring Sandra Bullock's door, so if anybody wants to shake my hand later, wants to <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> okay, but I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, now they're probably going to get me because this one out there, so they're going to give me for trespassing or whatever. You can't prove it. Um, what I'm saying is this. Dasha, Dasha means a bad person. Okay? So, if you're going to chase after a bad person, don't be surprised when they act badly. You get hurt, I will say it this way, you have no one to blame but yourself. You made a choice. Because a bad person, let's be honest, a bad person, you know they're bad. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about here. Morality. This is why I tell you frequently, show me how you live and you're telling me what you believe. 
How you live is what you believe. So a person who is acting badly, who behaves badly, is going to end up treating you badly because that's the way they are. Don't be surprised. Nope. No. So, let's look at what he says there. The Shayim, the bad ones, the evil ones. Let me get to the other marker. So, let's say it, ready? Ashe ha'ish ashe lo halat ha'asat v'shayim Again, ashe ha'ish ashe lo halat ha'asat v'shayim Again, ashe ha'ish ashe lo halat ha'asat v'shayim Say what? Ashrei chayish asher lo chalak ba'asat reshayim. Say what? Happy is the man who knows to walk in advice of the evil ones. In what kind of advice? Definite article, indefinite article, indefinite article. Say what? Any advice. You do not take advice from a wicked person. Number one, you should, you should not seek out the advice of a wicked person. Of a person who has no morals. And number two, if they come to give you advice, what? Do not take it. Do not listen to it. Why? Well, because we started off with what? Ashe, happy. So, if you take the advice... Other than Shaikin, then what? Guess what? Your life's not going to end up happy. Does this make sense? Yes. Do not walk in the advice of in any advice of a Shaikin, of a Rasha, of a wicked one. By the way, this word Rasha should be familiar. Those of you who watched the video of, uh, what was the young boy's name that had the vision in his life? Do you remember? Natan. What? Natan, yes, thank you. The, vision, the, the, the video of Natan who had the vision of, 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 of uh, he, had, he had a near-death experience, remember? And the rabbi, the Orthodox rabbi brought him and uh, put him on trial, so to speak, in front of all the other rabbis. Do you remember what he said that the, that the angels and that the people were saying to him as they were reviewing his life and that he had said or done or thought something wrong? And remember what they saw, what they said, Rasha, Rasha, Rasha. That the, that the people were yelling out at him, Rasha, 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 saying what? Evil, evil, evil. Saying what? What were they saying about him? And remember, this is what frightened him. You have no morals. Be careful. I need to be careful of my own morality. Remember that we are to guard our hearts. What does this mean? Stay with me. What does this mean? We are to guard our hearts, to keep, to guard, huh? Protect. To protect it. You are to put a shield around it, a wall around it, so that evil cannot get in. So the rabbis say this, not just rabbis, I'm sure you've heard this as well, but the rabbis say this frequently. Show me who you hang around with and I will show you who you are. Mm -hmm. Show me who you hang out with, and I will show you who you are. Because why? It tells about your character. Or the other saying is, birds of a feather. So what? 
if you are a, you consider yourself to be a good person, but you're hanging around with not so good people, guess what? You're telling the truth of your character. You are who the company you keep, exactly. Okay? So, we need to be careful with things like that. All right, so, let's get into the, into the uh, grammar aspect of, of this. And the root of the word, by the way, these three words at the bottom, you know this one already, you have it here, Ashen, which means who, which, or that. This is also, this comes from, you notice the Shin in the syllable here, okay? So, Shin, which also means who, which, or that. This is the prefix. Thus the dash. This is a prefix form. So, um, on Shabbat, we say, Avinu Shib Ben Shimayim. We shorten it to a Shib Shimayim, right? But literally, it is Shib Ben Shimayim. Okay? Shib Ben Shamayim. Which or who, literally? Who? In heaven. Which in good heaven. So, Avinu. Everyone? Avinu, which means what? Shabbat Shamayim. Notice the curiosity here of what? What do you see curious here? Shib the Shemayim. So here you have the noun, Shemayim. What's the curiosity? Two prefixes. Two prefixes. Shib and the, both prefixes. Meaning which in is, is understood in English, which is in it. You have two prefixes actually there before the noun. Shib the Shemayim. And the sh is coming from what? Asher. The last one is ka'asher. Everyone, ka'asher. Ka Again, ka'asher. Ka'asher. Ka you have ka. Notice that, that you have the 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 the. the, the Agesh. A al sari a shin e resh ka'asher. Which means light. Just as like as in similar. This is like that. Be like that person. Don't be like that person. Notice that the root of Ka'ashir is what? Ashir. The root of kashet is a shet, what? Which, that, who? So let's... Well, in just a second. So you can cut the asher short anytime. And just use chef. Um. Yeah, it's it's like a shortcut. It's like a shortcut. Yeah, if it's used as a prefix, uh, you know, it's coming before, and there's a reason for that. Um, all right. So some rules. The rules for Asher. I didn't bring my bobby pin tonight. So my keys up keeps falling up. All right. So rules for Asher number one: no inflection. 
What is inflection? Change of form. That's the end. Asher will always be Asher. It's always pronounced Asher. Asher, Asher, Asher. It never changes. Oh, thank you very much. Who gave me that? That was mine. Yours? Please, <laughs> please spare a little. So that means that the vowels will always be what they are. There's no change in letter, no change in form, no change in consonants. There's no change of form. Rule number two. Normally follows the antecedent what is the antecedent okay anti meaning before second Before the next part. Okay. Yeah, I'm curious. I've got to stop. I will tell you. Welcome to my life. Before, see it, what comes next? So, what is the antecedent? The antecedent is a phrase that comes in, in English grammar and also here in Hebrew grammar. The antecedent is a phrase that, that comes before another phrase. Basically, what we have here are two sentences put together. Look at it if you would. Happy is the man who does not walk in the advice of the wicked. So you have two, sen two sentences actually. Can y'all see over here? Can you see this? Yeah. Happy is the man. So, this is a sentence all by itself. <laughs> so, this is a sentence. Stay with me. This is a sentence. It's just reversed. What is reversed? The verb and the subject are reversed. How do you correct it? The man is happy. Do you see that? Okay? So the man is, this is the subject. Happy is, is happy is the, is the verb. Here, same thing. This is the verb. This is the subject. Okay? Now, the reason why it's reversed here is because you have this relative pronoun, who. And who must do what? What does it say? Normally follows what? The antecedent. This is the antecedent. This is the come before. Okay? So you're going to go here. Who? 
but does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So you have the, in the counsel of the ungodly is called a, who does who does not walk. Who does not walk is also is called is called a relative clause. Everyone say relative clause. It's called a relative clause. Why? Because there's relatives there. It's called a relative clause. Why? Because of Ashe. This is your relative pronoun. Who? Who what? The question needs to be answered. Who what? Who does not walk? The man is happy. The man does not walk. Who represents, remember, what is a pronoun? A pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. Say it with me. Pronoun is a word that takes the place of a noun. So, I can say, who does not walk? Correct? Or I can also say, because who is taking the place of the man? So I can also say, the man does not walk. And it's referring, it's both the same. So this is a complete sentence. This is a complete sentence. Do you see that? So this is the clause. This is the antecedent, and this is the clause. And rather than the man again, I will say who. So here you have the same thing. Ashre, what? Ashre. Ashre. Happy. Haish. Ashe. Who? Lo. No. Halak. Walk. Baatzar. Encounter. Reshai. Reshai. Okay, so notice you have, you have your relative pronoun here. This is your antecedent, your relative pronoun, and now your relative clause. Okay? That's the way it works. So when you see a chef that's telling you what, what's coming up, when you see a chef, what's coming up? Relative clause. Because it's not just going to end with who, or which, or what, that. It's going to end with a clause explaining what the who, what the antecedent is doing. The relative clause is relative. The reason why the relative clause is relative, what it is doing, is explaining. The action of the antecedent or the subject. Got it? The relative clause is doing what? It's explaining the action of the antecedent. So what? Why is he happy? It's answering the question. Happy is the man. Why is he happy? Because he does not walk in the council of the Adam. Okay, now. This is advanced grammar. We're going, to, we're going to stop here, but let me say something. This is advanced grammar. This is explaining sentence structure to you. Do not get bored with it. Stay with me. Because if you're going to understand, I know, I know that you know it, it's not all the it's not all the fun in the hoopla of the olive bed and things like that. We're getting more into the structure now of the sentence so you can understand the sentence. And so it's more technical than the olive bed and explaining the meanings and all of the interesting things there. But if you're going to understand the sentence, you need to understand the structure of the sentence. Okay, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. So we're going to take five here and then we'll do Tree of Life. Again, we'll just do a, a short Tree of Life tour.